be uh, pretty straight, so it, it won't affect our athletes as much because you you, you don't want a uh, side win. It's, it's always unfair. It feels wrong for athletes, so it's good that the win seems straight. And But at this point, any it's anyone's game. Yeah, it is, and I suppose a lot of it comes down to, to mental preparation as well at this point. And um, interesting, you talk about the wind, and for the kayaks, not so bad. They have the rudders, uh, they're, they're sitting lower in the boats, but for the canoes, the wind can cause a lot of disruption and trouble for the paddlers, but thankfully just a light breeze on the lake here. And um, no matter what lane you're in, you should still have a very good chance of getting in amongst the medal. So we'll just look at the lineup here. Moldova, watch for those... Daniela Koku and Maria Olarasu in lane one. Then we've got Germany, Lisa Jan and Sophie Koch, bronze medalist in Poznan. Um, a little bit early this season. Axel Renard and Eugenie Dorange, of course, for France. And uh, this young crew making good progress, so they'll be pleased to have made this final, and they'll, they'll be in with a shout. Now, alongside them, a massive lead in the earlier rounds for Zhu Zhizhao and Sun Mengya. Really dominant early on, dominant in the Czech Republic at the World Cup, but Du Bois and Segura, Yaris Ladies Du Bois and Catherine Segura, the young crew from Cuba just getting better and better, it seems, with every race, will put them under pressure, as will Ludmila Lutzan, Anastasia, Chet Verikova, the silver medalist just ahead of uh, you and Katie Vincent Lawrence at the Tokyo Olympics, the world champions, fourth in the Czech Republic. It's been a difficult and disrupted season for them, but let's hope they've got the bit between the teeth in this race. Giada Bragatu and Blanka Nagy, the young Hungarian crew, did so well in the Hungarian selection to make the team. Now there's Katie Vincent and Sloan McKenzie in picture, looking good, Lawrence next to them. Sylvia Szyszewska and Julia Waka Walczak from Poland. Just might give us a moment to say, how do we think the Canadian crew is going to get on? I have no idea. I've seen them race for the first time, uh, well, from what I can remember, yesterday. And uh, I was just very impressed by the way they were paddling together. So I'm excited to see. Uh, you know, I've, I've, we've said it, anyone's game right now, so I, I cannot pronounce myself right uh, as of now. Yeah, well, you, you're absolutely right, you know, just who manages to execute their race plan best to respond. I mean, no doubt uh, the Chinese who are in picture now we haven't seen a lot of dominant performances across the board in this World Championships, but we have from them. And this is a really exciting crew, the young Cubans as well. You know, when I watch them, I don't see the silky smooth technique that you and Katie Vincent have, but I do see a lot of potential. Indeed, they've been very impressive this year uh, during World, uh, World Cups and everything. Yeah, They have indeed, as of course have... Um, of the Ukrainians, both paddling on the same side, the Ukrainians, both right-handers paddling on the same side, must make it a little bit difficult perhaps for steering on that one, but it seems to work for them. Uh, yes, so I've done that for a few years, and it is possible, it is very, very possible, as long as uh, as you're synchronized very well and the person in the back is steering the best they can. Yeah. Okay, well, we've got the lineup. We have Moldova, Germany, France, China, Cuba, Ukraine, Hungary, Canada, and Poland in the final of the C2 Women 500 meters. So the start underway, and unsurprisingly, it is the Cubans with that choppy, powerful stroke. These long-levered Cubans who get away very well um, from the start. They're in the center of your picture. Right next to them, just four from the top of your picture, is the Chinese, really latching onto those strokes already. They're going well, so we've got Cuba, we've got China, and we've got, just stalking them at the minute, the Ukrainians. So it's early days at the moment, just maybe the Canadians keeping their power to dry. They're very, very smooth, you know, they'll hope to come perhaps with a late charge to this race. Great drone shots, we can see there, picture of the Cubans, but the Chinese, as they've shown in the earlier rounds, really beginning to dominate this one. The Chinese are usually super strong throughout the, the race, so there's no catching them up unless they, they get really tired. So right as of now, they're in the lead and they probably are to stay there. Yeah, and it, it must have given them so much confidence to, to really dominate the rest of the field. They were three or four seconds ahead of everyone else in the earlier rounds. Good to see Hungarians, a young Hungarian crew, really putting in a burn there and uh, looking well, looking good together. 
So this will be an interesting one. So it's a fairly recent Hungarian crew that did win the Hungarian trials, did very well there. They're looking to put the Chinese under pressure. So maybe the Chinese are getting tired. Who knows? We've got, what, 20 seconds left perhaps from now. Still a good margin, though, as we pan out. We can see the Hungarians, they may be coming, but they've still got a lot to do. It's the Cubans right next to the Chinese that really struggle. Ukraine is beginning to pick it up. As the camera pans out, we should see, there it is, the white bow of the Ukrainians being stalked, stroke for stroke, by the Hungarians. They're not going to take the win away from the Chinese paddlers. They do look tired. They look as if they're languishing a little bit now, but they've done enough early on. It's going to be China who take the gold. They were the very much the favourites. The Ukrainians using every ounce of their experience to get the silver. Hungarians, bronze, and the Polish Canadians not far away from the medals, whereas the Cubans really did struggle over the last 100 metres. The Chinese can be um, very, very satisfied with their work because... It well, certainly the Hungarians were coming, weren't they? That was really... You spotted that, didn't you, right away, just about the half... Just before the halfway point. Hungarians really, really picked it up. They can see the Ukrainians, and you talk about synchronicity and harmony in the perfect timing. Chet Velikova there, absolutely spot on in the back of that boat. And I'm so amazed to see how the Ukrainian have been doing here at this World Championships because I remember World Cups was not always easy. They had had just the start of the war and everything. And so to see that they are doing so great, like this crew is the crew that got a silver medal last year at the Olympics. And to see that again, they came in second right behind the Chinese is to prove how much they were for it and how yeah, it's, they can be proud of this. Yeah, you know, in, in many ways, maybe that's their gold medal in a sense, you know. It certainly, Ludmilla Lutz and looked very emotional in some of the World Cups. It's been a difficult journey for them, hasn't it? Anastasia Chetverikova, well, she set to marry her fiancé later on this season, so something to really look forward to. We'll see him racing actually a little bit later. Um, but, uh, yeah, really good good for the Hungarians to get in amongst those medals. And I, don't, I can't translate that, but what I can say is that you can tell by their body language that there was a really tough race out there. And they, they really